Hi, I'm Tomid. I'm Matt. And I'm Manish. And we made an AI for Cricket 2007. Cricket 2007, okay. Yep, yeah. So we are playing it on this PC back here. Okay, so there's a PC in the back. Yeah, we're sending the VGA output to this custom PCB we made, which then sends the analog signals to ADCs, high-speed ADCs, which feed uh, those digital outputs into uh, the GPIOs of the FPGA. Okay, so buried under here is a is a, a DE two one one five. Oh, this is, oh no, this is a DE one SOC. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And and then the output of the FPGA feeds back over a serial communication line onto um, a microcontroller that then uses that and uses optic isolators to. Simulate button presses on a keyboard. So this is a hacked open keyboard. It's a hacked open keyboard. Yep, center desktop mm -hmm. keyboard. We hacked the uh, matrix keyboard and uh, to short the to short the switches as required. And the FPGA also drives a VGA connection that then goes out to this monitor. Okay, so this monitor. So you can overlay graphics then yep. from yes. the FPGA onto there. And so the 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 short of it is that. The FPGA is watching the video and playing the game. Yep. yep. And you and you simulated specifically uh, the batting portion of the game. batting portion of the game. Okay. So uh, going back to the overlay, this is these three markers are overlay uh, overlaid that help us actually determine how to time the batting. Yeah. So and if we just go through one motion of batting, so yeah. So th all of this will now be automatic. We are the batting team. Yeah. So first it determines whether or not the batter is left or right-handed, and then makes an appropriate shot. Um, in addition to that, if you see the red, green, and blue lines, the green is an ideal shot. It's uh, right in the middle of the timing gauge. The red is when our threshold is set for sending the command, because there is a latency between sending the keyboard press and it actually being registered by the game. And the blue is where the shot actually landed, and that serves as an error correction term, essentially. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a simple P controller, no I or D terms. And that was out of the park for a six. And this happens pretty frequently. The game is very good at it, much better than a human is, uh, solely because it can exploit uh, logical limitations of the game to actually uh, <coughs> ideally time it and overcome latencies that Windows has and the game has in, and humans, uh, have. And, and humans yeah. have to Get a perfect timing every single time. So humans would find it interesting because of the of the speed of the pitch and the and the difficulty in getting the timing right. But the yep. FPGA doesn't have nearly that problem. Nope. No. No. Nope. So, for example, for variable speed issues, the FPGA actually calculates the speed at which it moves by looking uh, at consecutive frames. That's something that you won't be doing uh, mentally. You'll just play and get a feel for it. But the FPGA can just calculate and compensate for that. Mm -hmm. And again, all this batting is being done completely automatically by the uh, by the FPGA. By the FPGA. Uh, in order to reduce our compile times and help us do quicker development, we decided not to use a an ARM or an IS on the FPGA, and instead just have an off chip microcontroller. Um, this way, we can do incremental compilation, incremental development by doing two and a half minute compilations in the worst case so that we can keep testing quick, fairly quickly. Yeah, it's only a couple hundred logic elements. And besides, you were out of I.O. pins on the FPGA. Oh, 72 right? of them. Yep. So you had to use an external yep. Yep. microcontroller. Yeah, so we currently are outputting this with just 8-bit color. We actually added support on the uh, PCB for external SRAM, so we could store it all in 24-bit color. Unfortunately, in the interest of time, we haven't implemented that. But it's there. It's yeah, there. The good enough. It's just and that seems like something that you might end up reusing for another project. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Especially the ADCs on board there are, they go at a, up to a max of 100 MSPS. So you're thinking digital oscilloscope. Yep, yeah. front end, yep. Three, three channel digital oscilloscope, full bandwidth. Ooh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.